Okay, so in this video, we're going to work an example problem where we draw a histogram. We're going to answer these four questions here from section two of the histogram chapter. So it says the table below gives the distribution of education levels for persons age 25 and over in the U.S. in 1960, 1970, and 1991. Okay, so education level means the number of years of schooling completed. The class intervals include the left endpoint, but not the right. Okay, so that's the endpoint convention. For example, from the second line of the table in 1960, about 14% of the people had completed five to eight years of schooling, eight not included, right? So in 1960, about 14% of the people, this is like they did a survey of people age 25 and older, 14% of the people in the survey had completed five to eight years of schooling, eight not included, eight's included in this interval. So it includes the left endpoint, but not the right endpoint. In 1991, about 4% of the people were in this category. Okay, so draw a histogram for the 1991 data. You can interpret 16 or more as 16 to 17 years of schooling. Not many people completed more than 16 years of school, especially in 1960 and 1970. Okay, why does your histogram have spikes at 8, 12? And, okay, so let's draw the histogram. So... From the previous video, we went through section two. We talked about how to draw a histogram. The first step is to get your distribution table. Well, we're given the distribution table here. We want to, we're, we're drawing the table for, or the histogram for 1991. So we're, the distribution table contains the class intervals and the percents of data points within that interval, and also uh, the endpoint convention. So left endpoints included, right endpoints not included. So that's the first step in drawing a histogram. We've got our distribution table. Now let's set up our horizontal axis. And remember with a histogram, the horizontal axis needs to be evenly spaced, right? Usually for any graph, the horizontal axis is going to be evenly spaced and the vertical axis. But I think there's some graphs where it's not quite like that, like a, like a, a, a logarithm axis, right? They're, they're, they're not evenly spaced and that's okay. But you couldn't do that for a histogram because the histogram is based on you, you're getting a visual look at the proportion of the areas. So you have to have an evenly spaced horizontal axis with a histogram and a vertical axis because it's all about the areas with a histogram, right? It's all about the areas of the blocks. Okay, so what's our axis going to be? Like what's our tick marks going to be on the, on, the, on the horizontal axis? Okay, well, years of schooling, right? So we can go, each tick mark will be one year of schooling. So there's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And it says sixteen or more just is just sixteen or seventeen. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, and this is years of schooling. And honestly, it's probably best to have a computer do this because, again, it's all about the areas. So you want to make sure your the tick marks are like as evenly spaced as possible, right? A computer could do that the best, but this is, we're just kind of getting, getting the idea of how a histogram works in this, in, in this course. So, I mean, yeah, like you would do this, uh, you would want to make a histogram with Excel, right? And, and mo most likely or with some sort of a software in real life. But again, this is, this practicing it this way helps us get the intuition behind <laughs> histograms how they work, right? Doing it manually like this. It's good practice. Okay, so now the vertical axis is going to, you're going to use the vertical axis and you can remove this after if you want. After, if like if you want to present your histogram, it doesn't have to have a vertical axis, but you're going to need a vertical axis to draw the histogram. So what we do is, so this this first block here, is going from zero to five. So it's a, a pretty big block. What's the height of that block going to be? Well, we talked about this. We, we need the 
when we multiply the width of the block, so 5, by the height of the block, it needs to equal 2. So 5 times the height of the block needs to equal 2. h is 2 divided by 5. Point 0.4. Okay, so now let's, before we draw this, let's get an idea of of, of the overall heights and of, of each of the blocks. So we'll have 4 divided by 3, 4 divided by 1, 11 divided by 3, okay, 39 divided by 1, 18 divided by 3, 21 divided by 2. So 39, we're going to have, a block's going to have a height of 39, so let's see, we've got, okay, so each of these tick marks will be two. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. Okay, now remember, what is the units of, of this axis going to be it's percent per whatever the units of the horizontal axis are so this is percent per well year of year of schooling right percent per year because this is this is like five years of schooling ten years of schooling this is per, just percent per year of schooling Okay, so the height of this block is 0.4, so it's really short. This is that the first, the 0 to 5 block. All right, now this block from 5 to 8, from 5, 6, 7, 8, is, so 4 divided by 3. One point three three. So this is two, this is one, so just a little bit higher, not much. Okay. Now from eight to nine, four percent, but this is the interval is just one. So this height's gonna be four, two, four. So about there okay so th this is working right like if we take five times 0.4 we get two if we take three times 1.333 we get four if we take one times four we get four so we're doing this right all right now nine to twelve that's three. That's the class. The class interval width is three. Eleven divided by three is what? Three point six seven. So a little bit shorter. We go two four. So something like that. One two three. Okay, now, you know, this is, these are all really short. Like, uh, normally I wouldn't, uh, I would have made these interval widths finer so we could see, have more resolution and see these blocks better, but we're about to get some really tall blocks. So, okay, from 12 to 13, 39%. And it's the interval width, interval width is just one. So, see, we come all the way up here. So, we... about right there and then this interval width is just one okay 13 to 16 that's 18 that's that's an interval width of three so 18 divided by three is six so two four six about right there 
two, four, six. All right, and now 16 or more, and they told us just to, to plot this as 16 to 17, and that's 21%. So we go to about here. Okay, so let's... Well, okay. Okay, so there you go. That's that's the histogram. And if you wanted to present this histogram, you could remove the vertical axis if you wanted to. The only requirements, the key is that you have to have this evenly spaced horizontal axis and th these it ha this has to be drawn so that the areas are proportional to, to one another in the sense that they represent the percent of data points within that interval, the, the air, total areas, right? That's the whole thing. You present someone a histogram and they get, they can have a visual sense of how the data points in the, in whatever you're presenting are distributed. All right. So why does your histogram have spikes at eight, 12 and 16 years of schooling? Okay, so why, why these spikes? I, would, I don't know if I'd call this a spike, but these are spikes. But what, what, what does this mean? Well, we're going to talk about this in detail in the next section. But let, let's focus on these, these spikes, right? These are more significant. 12 to 13 years of schooling and 16 to 17. Now, remember, this is not like, um, you know, 12 to 13-year-old kids. This is years of schooling. So... Uh, a high school degree is about 12 to 13 years of schooling once you've completed your high school degree. And so there's a, a large percentage of the people are not only within this bin, but even, even that also that bin is, is it's a, it's a, the width is small as well, right? Because it's not going to be as common. Like you're not going to have a big spike at 10 years of schooling. Cause that means that like you have a, you have a large number of people are answering that they dropped out of high school. Right. And then look, so this is 12, 13, one, two, three, four. And here's four years, of, four more years of schooling. So they finished college. Right. You're going to have a larger, a large amount of people that are going to say, well, I finished high school, but I didn't go to college. Or they're going to say I finished college. Right. But it's it. But it, this is a little deceiving because it's not just about the height. Right. Because because it almost implies that I'm talking about, well, the height represents the um the percentage of that of those data points it's not just the height right it's the total area and so this is really high though because you're going to have a distinct like group of people that are right at right at that high school graduation level and and they're either going to go to they're probably and what's going to happen they're probably going to go to, they're going to not go to college they're going to they graduate high school boom then they either don't go to college or they go to college and they finish Right. That's going to be the most common scenario. So you have this big spike here. OK, now we're going to we're going to talk about this in more detail in the next section. But that's just, this is just to kind of get you thinking about it, thinking about these um, that these heights and, and the total areas of these blocks. All right. Redraw the histogram for the 1991 data, combining the first two class intervals into one. So you'll have zero to eight years with six percent of the people. Does this change the histogram much? Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to pause the video and either redraw this myself or go find it in the solutions. So let me do that right now. Okay, so here the, the blocks from the zero to five and the five to eight blocks are combined. So you have one block that's, that's eight years of schooling in width and it has 6% total area. Okay, and so if we look, here's before those blocks are combined. And here's after. So, I mean, I guess it just, it smooths out the graph here, right? Yeah, it just smooths out the graph here. I kind of like it like this, but it just, it, it, like, it, it takes the average, kind of like an average. See, because if, if we overlay these, you can see the graph in the background. It's kind of like an intermediate height. So it gives you like an average of the two blocks. You can think of it like an average. I don't want to call it an average. 
All right, draw the histogram for the 1970 data and compare it to the 1991 histogram. What happened to the educational level of the population between 1970 and 1991? Did it go up, go down, or stay about the same? Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video and draw this histogram for 1970, right, for this data here. Okay, so here is the, the 1991 histogram, the original one that, that we drew. And then now I just drew the 1970 histogram. Okay, so it says, draw that histogram. What happened to the educational level of the population between 1970 and 1991? Did it go up, down, or stay about the same? Okay, so how do we interpret the education level? Well, are there more, a larger percentage of people with more years of schooling? And it looks to me like the education level, this is 1991, went up because look you've got a this this went down and then this went down so people not graduating high school went down and then you have a, a a bigger spike in like the the high school graduates went up and the the college graduates went up okay what happened to the education level from 1960 to 1970 so let me pause the video and i'm going to draw this histogram and I probably should have put, it would have been easier if I had put 1970 first here so you can compare it like left to right. But I'll draw the 1960 histogram and we'll put 1960 here and 1970 here and compare. Okay. So here I just drew this 1960 histogram. What happened to the education level from 1960 to 1970? These look to be about the same. So I'm assuming these all are like dropouts. Now, I guess this isn't finishing high school, but what I'm assuming is, so if we look here, in 1991, this, that peak is, is pretty much non-existent. And so, but if we look here, this, that peak exists. So I guess maybe that's like kids that decide to not even go to high school and just go to, go, go to work, right? That's like a common thing, like a common thing done in the culture at that time. Right. It's, they're not dropping out. It's just like, a you know, you decide to not go to high school. I don't know, something like that. And but like all the, the unconventional like people that drop out, that's about the same. In both in both of these and even in. 1991, that's about the same. So. But. From 1960 to 1970, this peak drops. And in 1991, that peak really drops even more. So I guess that's like people not like people that it's not like the common convention to, to not even start ninth grade or something. That just goes that's starting to go away. High school graduates is increasing. College graduates is increasing. So the education level is going up. OK, so now in the next section, we're going to we're going to talk about the density scale. That's. How do we interpret like the height, the strictly the the height on a histogram, right? Not the area, the height. 